A lot of people come here as travelers. Their attention is just to come and stay for one or two months and leave and go on to something else. Other people come with the intention of staying longer. Some end up changing their minds and not doing so. But a lot of people do end up staying here. And the general path is like, first they come as a volunteer or maybe they rent a room if they don't want to volunteer. And if they like it, they end up buying land. And once they have their land, they'll eventually start building a house on their land and planting trees on their land. We are here in Ecuador, in the Amazon rainforest. Here, Peter, Jason, and the others live their lives in a large, self-sufficient community called Fruit Haven. So over the next couple of months, we'll be watching for that. I mean, we'll know within a few weeks if that died. But if it starts popping on new growth, we know there's at least some kind of connection. And once it starts popping out new growth, then we start gradually taking off the branches of this, of the rootstock and letting this grow out. I'm Peter. I'm from the Northeast United States. How this whole thing started, like eight or nine years ago, there was a website on the internet called 30bananasaday.com. And me and a bunch of guys on there thought it would be a great idea to find some land in the tropics and grow fruit. And most of the people in that group didn't end up doing that, but a few of us held on to the dream. My friend Jason had uh, traveled around Hawaii and Mexico and Peru. And so Jason said, hey, we found some land in Ecuador. It's a great area. And I said, I'm coming down. Fortunately, Peter was not alone for the task, since Jason had already been in Ecuador for two years, doing the groundwork to start a community. My name is Jason Cavesid. Uh, I'm from Minnesota in the United States and it was quite a radical change actually when like I started to appreciate plants and nature. It happened when I first smoked marijuana. My mind exploded and I realized all the plants around me actually were alive. I started to become more aware of like just that there's a whole world of plants everywhere in the whole world and it's not just like people. It's, it's, there's a lot more going on than just us. Jason was happy to start a new life here in the middle of the jungle. And our plan was never to stop there. We always wanted to keep expanding and growing and making more places like this. So we found another opportunity nearby for getting land. And so we found like five or six other people and we bought the land that became Fruit Haven 1. Year after that, Fruit Haven 2. Year after that, Fruit Haven 3. And now we're, we're, we're continuing to, to expand. At first, it was difficult to find the perfect area for the community. But as soon as they arrived in this magical corner of Ecuador, they knew right away that they would stay here for good. Shortly thereafter, more and more land was purchased, resulting in more space for the community to grow. Thus, the Terra Frutis and Fruit Haven communities were created. These two communities cover a total of 330 hectares and are located in southeast Ecuador, in the foothills of the Andes Mountains. So my name is Boris Plotkin. Um, I was born in Belarus and then moved to Israel when I was a baby, like one year and a half, and then lived in Israel for 10 years and then moved to Canada. So yeah, today we are here in Ecuador in the southeast part. So we're in kind of the jungle, the beginning of the Amazon forest. It's good location because it's a tropical temperature that we can grow durians and jackfruits and you know, mame sapote and different things like that. And it's safe from volcanoes, so it's further from that. So there's no volcanoes and no hurricanes and no tsunamis. This area has very good long-term potential, as it is free from natural disasters and wars. When we first got the Fruit Haven 1 property, it was just kind of the empty farm and this 70-year-old farmhouse and nobody was here. Nothing was happening. So two months later, I moved in. It was like, we got to get this started. I started a website. First thing I did was to kind of start accounts on the websites for woofing and work away and start accepting volunteers. And at first it wasn't really a raw vegan community because a lot of these people who came were just regular travelers. Of course, they, we made them eat vegan when they stayed here, but it wasn't what we wanted it to be at first, but it was what we needed it to be in order to let it grow. In the beginning, in order to reach a suitable headcount, 
Many volunteers were accepted from various international programs, such as woofing and work away. So yeah, that's our nursery where we keep a lot of plants. A lot of them are for grafting. So the avocados here, we use them basically as the rootstock, as the part to graft other varieties of avocados. Um, what else? We have this variety of cacao, we have black sapote, we have the jackfruit, and some other sapotes, mulberries, and, and snake fruit. Boris and the others are raw vegans. It is important for him to grow fruits and vegetables that are suitable for this diet, but that can also produce well in this climate. Yeah, we have a lot of rare banana varieties that they don't have locally. So like the ice cream banana from Hawaii and the Thai banana, the Namwa and Orinoco's from Venezuela. A lot of interesting fruits. And the people that come, they want to experience that. And some of them are interested. Some of them are just curious to see and live in this way. And then they go back to some other place. Maybe they take the ideas and learn something new to go to another place and it's interesting also to see when they're inspired and suddenly they want to buy land and also uh, you know make a fruit farm and yeah build their houses and things here. <laughs> Boris is a very dedicated member of the community but he is not alone in that. Hidden deep in the jungle of southeast Ecuador is a community where any fruit loving human can live and experience a refreshing new reality. My life was uh, quite dark before. I used to live in, uh, yeah, Minnesota, just a, like a rural town and, you know, surrounded for like hundreds of miles by like corn and soybeans. And um, that, you know, that was not the worst part at all. The worst part was uh, being in like a drug culture, which I think most of Americans are raised in, a criminal, a druggy sponging off other people and that was like the reality I lived in for a few years just like all my friends. Drug use is huge in the United States and statistics show their popularity is only increasing especially among young people. This is partly because access to drugs is very easy in the US. Like everybody I knew smoked cigarettes you know drank alcohol did other harder drugs and um, dark reality to live in sadly and I I think a lot of people still live like that, and it's really unfortunate because there's like a whole other world of reality where people can live. It is important to be open to the world because there are many things we can still learn about life. Is it possible to find happiness here in the Ecuadorian jungle? Yeah, I did find happiness. I don't know how to explain it though because it's a very like, like, you know, intangible kind of thing to like mention. and conclude on and be like, you know, when it's sunny out, I feel good, or when I work really hard and I get to swim in the same day, and it's sunny, and I pooped a few times, and things are going well, then I feel good. Like, yeah, if we, I guess if we throw all those together, it sounds like I can really, like, itemize it and say that's what makes me happy. Jason traveled for two years, exhausting his life savings to find a suitable community land. Jason's good friend and mentor, Jay, purchased the first parcel of land, which became terra frutis. Yeah, I had basically saved up like $40,000 from selling weed. And um, we looked for land for quite a while, looked at like specific climates and all this. When Jason was looking for the land here, he had a list of criteria and this area was like the sweet spot for a lot of those things. Thanks to Jason's extensive research, the community was founded in an area that meets everyone's needs. After like a year of looking for land, we we settled on this area because of the elevation and so like the temperatures and the rainfall. For example, it's warm enough to grow durian and other super tropicals, but it's not so hot that it's uncomfortable to live. Um, there's enough rainfall year round that you don't have to spend thousands of dollars putting in irrigation systems so your fruit trees don't die. But on the other hand, it's not like monsoon tropics where it's pouring rain every single day for two months a year. There's uh, very low crime in this area. A lot of other areas in South America, even on the coast of Ecuador, there's a lot more crime. And we're fortunate that we found an area that's just out in the middle of nowhere. And it's really great here. Despite the fact that Ecuador is a developing nation, there is not much political instability and crime rates are very low in the Amazon. 
So there's three main regions of Ecuador. There's the coast, there's the Andes Mountains that runs right down the middle of the country, and then there's the Amazon region. And we're in the Amazon region. Uh, however, in the Amazon region, there's the Amazon Basin, which is a very, very low elevation, and then there's a bunch of foothills and mountains coming up from the Amazon Basin into the Andes Mountains. But because of this kind of unique geographical area we're in, um, the temperature are, is very steady year-round. It's very comfortable. It never gets to super hot or super cold. Uh, it stays within a very narrow range. There's also basically no natural disaster risk in this area. Uh, obviously we're not near the coast, so things like typhoons and hurricanes and uh, tsunamis aren't a concern here. There's been no major earthquakes recorded in this area um, ever. Uh, in other parts of Ecuador, yes, but here, no. Everyone we've talked to says the quality of life here is great. The question arises, is it worth leaving the city life and moving to the edge of the Amazon? Is there a different fate awaiting them here? A better future? Maybe they have to deal with the same problems as in their past lives, but with a totally new attitude. A group of us decided that we want to have like our own private ownership, so when we have a problematic person, we can more rapidly conclude that this person's a problem and tell them to get out of the community. Like, you know, a lot of people have come and volunteered and they tell us like, oh, this is like the hardest work I've ever done in my life. And I'm like, really? We were trying to take it very easy and do all the work for you today. Like, you know, that should have been not that hard because we're trying to make it an easy day for you, but uh, okay. As easy as it may seem to work a total of four hours a day, some volunteers can find this difficult. Um, like over the years, I think we've had like 800 people come through the two communities of Terra Frutis and Fruit Haven. And um, there's been a number of times now where people come and they say in their questionnaire that they fill out like, how long are you gonna stay? And their answer is, I'm gonna stay forever. You know, they come and they're super excited and um, things seem like it's, it's all gonna work out perfect. And then they get here and they find out some things are difficult. The hard, you know, so something's just not as they imagined it. Some of the people here, they have like various pillars kind of holding up their structure of like, you know, why to do this? Like, what is their purpose? And um, yeah, for example, like I know Peter really well. He's been here for a long time and we have a lot of similarities in like why we're doing this. It's, you know, there's like, there's a longevity aspect that like what we're doing will last for a long time and it'll have good effects and benefits to the planet and to like the culture nearby. We're gonna spread these new fruit genetics. We're gonna, show people that there's like an easy way and a friendly way and a fun way to like live with nature. The idea of permaculture is very fascinating. We are doing this for the next generation. It includes a set of design principles derived using whole systems thinking. In the middle of the Ecuadorian jungle, we find ourselves in a community where everyone sticks together. Here at Fruit Haven, they do not depend on the government, and they even use alternative currencies to reduce outside financial influence. Almost everyone who lives here is raw vegan or eats a fruit-based diet of course, we have to ask, what are their favorite fruits? Uh, so my name is Ania, I am from Poland, and my favorite fruits... Uh... Well, let's see, I think overall I'll give you the, my favorite fruit is anything that's like really good in season. Mango, or cherimoya, one of those. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <sighs> My name is Bradley, I'm from the United States, and my favorite fruit is watermelon. It's mango, papaya, pitahaya, rolinha. I've been living out of a backpack for 
about eight years. So I've been traveling here and there and everywhere and trying to be enlightened. So I was working on my own health for some time and getting very intense about purifying my mind, my body. And I wanted to be around other people who were possibly thinking the same thing. And I found this place online and thought I'd give it a shot. Overall, like it's my favorites were like uh, Mame Sapote, really enjoyed that one. So for me, coming here, a big part of it was cleaning my body out before here. I had spent three plus years living in a meditation center and traveling to Nepal, visiting spiritual teachers, trying to purify my mind and realizing I was going so much into this one aspect of the spiritual journey and neglecting the vehicle by which the journey happens. And, you know, so while someone's wanting to purify their, their body, naturally I started to question what am I eating, what am I putting in my body, and started to eat healthier, and found this place where a lot of people were eating healthier and spending a lot of time in nature, you know, being naked, uh, br breathing deeply, just all of these different things that will promote a more purified body. My favorite fruit is sapodilla, this plant here. Lulinia is one of my favorite fruits. This one right here is going to grow like twice as big and it's going to turn kind of yellow and the inside is going to be like lemon meringue pie filling. <laughs> I forgot that I like Marina, it's raspberry. <laughs> So before coming to this community, I've been living three months in Buenos Aires because I'm a tango dancer, so I went to stay there to dance tango. Then before I spent one year living in Poland. After much traveling, Anna now spends her daily life here. I came to this place because I was looking on Google for raw food communities in South America, and this place just came up the reason is understandable, but how many people will it take to build this community in a truly earth-changing way? If just like a few million people start to live like this, start to take some actions of like taking private communication and like some alternative activism, like uh, the founder, one of the founders of permaculture said like, activism is not done by protesting, it's done by farming. Some people prefer to do more of a natural forest system where you just basically have big fruit trees that got really big and you don't have to take care of them that much. The thing with that is we do that too. So it's not like one way is right and one way is wrong. We try to do as many techniques as work here, but some things work better than others. Those who live here are familiar with many permaculture techniques. The essence of permaculture is to produce food without harming the environment. There's so many different things that we've tried here and that haven't worked, and there's other things we've tried that have worked. So I try to go by what works. But just because something doesn't work doesn't necessarily mean it can't work. Maybe we just didn't try it right. Peter seems to have tried a lot of things already in this jungle-sized garden. So we wake up in the morning, we start working with the plants. Everything is done on a permaculture way, so with no harm to the, to the earth and no harm to our bodies because we don't use any pesticides. A key principle in permaculture is to grow food without synthetic chemicals. Fortunately, it is still possible to keep insects and pests away from our plants without harming the environment. So I think with any journey where I'm going into nature and surrounded by nature, right? I have to, I just have to surrender to whatever that plan is. Because here, you can just look around. Obviously, I'm not in charge. The plants are in charge, the river's in charge, the sky's in charge, not me. I was expecting kind of a hunky-dory, butterflies and unicorns, very peaceful setting, you know, just this idyllic place. And 
when I got here, there was some of that idealism. However, we're in community here. You know what I mean though, right? <laughs> just this magical fairyland that everyone was just, you know, oh, what's your fruit today? What's, you know, what's, it's all perfect, right? It was a paradise is what I expected to some degree. And when I got here, I realized that it was far from paradise, that people were coming here with their own sets of problems, their own baggages, and that we had to interact with one another. We had to like basically take on that challenge of being in communion with one another. So that brought on a whole new set of challenges, not just with cleaning my body out, oh, but what is it like to interact now? What is it like to, to learn about the place I'm in, to really be enmeshed in the land here? And what does that mean? Yeah, lots of differences between expectations and reality. However, I'm so much happier with reality than what I was expecting. See, there's a lot of work around the trees, the vegetable garden. Then around, around 12, we are usually done. So then personally, I go usually to take shower in the waterfall. <laughs> and some people read books or do yoga or other exercises. Some people just go for a walk to the town or just lay down and watch the clothes. <laughs> some people read books because we have a very good library here. The community has its own library, a strong internet connection, and plenty of interesting fruits. But how do they spend their days? Here at Fruit Haven, there's, there's opportunity to do a lot of physical exercise, there's opportunity to sweat. And obviously that's a great way to get toxins out of your body, but that's not the only important thing, it also makes you strong. And a lot of people are very, very weak, you know. I see people come here and build up their muscle over a course of a year, to the point where they can carry a big sack of something or a head of bananas on their shoulders that they couldn't do when they first got here, myself included. At the moment I'm living in the tent and how it feels, it feels very good, you know, it's a very good tent, very waterproof, what we need here. I don't feel it as something surprising or very different because usually I live some time in the city, then some time in the nature, some time in the city, then I travel, then this, so... Hey, it's, it's a good tent, so it's very fine. <laughs> Only the braver ones sleep in tents, as they've built plenty of bungalows and cabins. Yeah, there's a big diversity of all kinds of flowers, all kinds of butterflies, and all kinds of birds. The nature is very, very rich, very beautiful, very fresh and green, also because of the rain that falls very often. It gets pretty rainy here during the wet season. But what keeps people here in spite of that? I think we just realized we are not separated from the nature and that we are a part of it. And many people feel need of going back to, to the nature. And I feel and I know that it just makes us more peaceful, more happy, more connected with ourselves, with the world. It helps us to stay more healthy, to, to, have, to keep also the, the health of the mind. The fantastic thing about it all is that it makes everyone feel truly free. Somehow, I imagine that's how people spent their lives in the beginning of civilization. We're trying to create basically a new village here where that doesn't happen. You don't have to watch your relatives kill themselves and, and watch people um, tempt you with unhealthy habits all day long. And There's not like groups of friends here who go out to drink all the time like there is everywhere else in the world. Sometimes we all get together and pick an area of the farm to maintain. Everyone obviously has to learn uh, how to grow fruit if their goal is to live in a place like this. So everyone will come as a group, we'll announce it a couple days in advance, we'll do a banana maintenance workshop and explain the ins and outs of taking care of bananas and planting bananas. The essence of the workshops is for the people living here to learn everything they need to know about growing fruits. So personally, I eat in the daytime fruits and last meal in the afternoon, I eat more like salads or some 
noodles, raw noodles, and yeah, in the evening usually people are like cooking, preparing the food. So personally, I like to make the noodles of zucchini or of cucumber with different chutneys, sauces. So oh, there's a lot of things that you can make. And once you walk to the kitchen, you will see that people make really amazing dishes and everyone has some special idea for it. So raw food kitchen has really big potential and the things are so delicious, they don't lose the taste. Yeah. These very delicious recipes are made exclusively from raw vegetables and fruits, nuts, seeds, and herbs. A variety of preparation tasks are needed to create these gourmet raw vegan dishes. As we watch them make these beautiful dishes, it is amazing to see that they did it all without cooking and without any meat or dairy products. In the community workshops, in addition to preparing recipes, everyone can learn about planting fruit trees and permaculture plant care. The quality of the food on the table here depends on the effort the community puts into growing it. There's also just general social events, like everyone will just hike to the waterfall and go for a swim, or one time everyone went out on a cave expedition. There's a cave near Guadalajara, and they went on a hike through a cave, and, and that was really cool. So this is the Namwa or ice cream bananas, cacao variety, which is called Cupuaçu. It's a national fruit of Brazil, and that's our first year that it's fruiting. And then whatever stuff comes in the compost. So sometimes we have tomatoes that grow. Pretty nice ones actually, sometimes they're smaller. The vast majority of people that come here only stay for two or three months. And you might think that that's a bad thing, um, but it's actually hugely beneficial because I've seen a lot of communities that only accept long-term people. And as a result, they only have one or two or three or four people and that's it. But you need to have this constant flow of, of volunteers and travelers and renters coming in. Uh, and that brings your population from five to 20. My goal is to be sufficient and live in this community where we're all of the same or similar enough vision. Everyone has different ideas about what they think about life and how to live and all these things. But overall, if the idea is to live in nature in the most natural way with as limited as much as possible in terms of manipulating the nature and uh, just in the harmony so it's yeah peaceful here everything is in harmony the land is magical the weather is wonderful and the community is great but aside from those obvious factors what were boris's main considerations for staying here for me it was just I knew that I wanted to be in tropics because I love the tropical fruit and uh, I know I love to be always warm so it's always warm here year-round it's not too hot and it's not too cold so it's kind of like always a perfect temperature for me and that's what I enjoy. This is a very radiant place where everyone enjoys living and being. They have managed to find plenty of natural attractions, bringing like-minded people to one of the most beautiful places in Ecuador. So we have Fruit Haven 1, we got Fruit Haven 2, we got Fruit Haven 3, we have Fruit Haven 10. And right now we're looking for some more people so we can buy Fruit Haven 4. Um, generally when someone's interested in buying land here, they'll go on our website and read a whole lot of information we have there. Um, and then they can fill out a questionnaire. Um, where we can decide if we want to accept them uh, to participate in the group land buys. So once we get enough people into one of those um, group land buys, we buy the property and set it all up and mark out the lots. And we're, we're always doing this. Uh, every once in a while somebody asks like, oh, if I, I don't have enough money saved up. If I come back in like two years, are there going to be land available? Of course, we're never going to stop doing this. We're going to keep doing it. As Peter said, they will never stop what they are doing. And one day, 
they would like to achieve world domination. Anyone interested in coming to Fruit Haven can fill out their online questionnaire if the opportunity calls to them. Everyone living here will do their best to do as little damage to nature as possible. In the middle of nowhere, on the edge of the Amazon, in the tropical wilderness of Ecuador, a community centered around fruit and raw foods who left their lives behind. So my name is Travis. Um, I was born in South Africa, but I moved to the UK when I was 18 years old. So I have dual nationality, UK and South African. So in the last year, I was in New Zealand, yeah. Um, I started a raw food journey in New Zealand and you know started watching a lot of people online uh, finding out you know how they do it uh, what works best and you know the the general idea was a raw food diet seems to be a lot easier in tropical climates because the quality of the fruit is so much better so when I was forced to leave New Zealand because I wanted to stay there but my visa ran out and I wasn't able to stay so instead of going back to England where well, I knew it would be difficult to stay on a raw food diet I decided to come to Fruit Haven and um, see how much easier it is and so far it's been great particularly being surrounded by everybody else who's on a raw vegan diet and doing the same thing you know Life is a lot easier if you spend your days with people who think similarly. Yeah, I saw it's group land buys and it's like the only place in the world doing group land buys and I thought it was perfect, this place here. It's on the edge of civilization and we're across a walk bridge so not everybody can just drive over here. And I live like way up the mountain so it's still like totally, totally off grid. I can hardly hear anything besides nature up there. It's really peaceful. <laughs> Calmness and peace are abundant here. Perhaps that is one reason why Jaden left the freezing plains of southern Oklahoma to live in an off-grid cabin in the jungle at Fruit Haven Eco Village. Uh, I've been here for like seven months and I've been living in my house for like three months, I think. Yeah, uh, only two, it only took two months to build my house. Yeah. But I had to walk up the mountain two kilometers uh, every day for like two months to help with the work on the house and make sure it was being done right. Uh, it's very relaxing. It's wonderful. Um, you know, in the mornings during the week, do some working in the garden. So either, you know, lots of weeding with the fruit trees or preparing like the vegetable beds. It seems that everyone here in the rainforest is happy to do their daily tasks. That's mostly it, really, in terms of work. Then in the afternoons, it's all about relaxing, socializing, and maybe doing some sort of some practice to be more healthy. And that's it, yeah. It's very, very peaceful, which is, you know, perfect. The land they have is currently 3.3 square kilometers, or 1.2 square miles. They purchase more land each year to expand the community. This land is divided into several community areas and many private homestead lots. Each of these areas is inhabited by frugivores, humans exploring their ancestral diet. Yeah, I've planted a lot of fruit trees, got a house built now. Uh, planted five soursops, eight citrus trees, three poshtes a bunch of uh, Mexican sunflowers. I'm gonna plant Relinia soon, Katuk, Taro, Yucca, Cranberry Hibiscus, <laughs> all the good stuff. <laughs> For me, it took about two months to build a house and like probably around four grand. And then I've also bought a motorcycle, a generator, uh, planting all the fruit trees and stuff. Pretty good, you can't get anything that cheap anywhere else. Like, not in the US for sure. <laughs> for those who live in expensive Western countries, building a cabin for only $4,000 may seem incredibly cheap. 
Of course, it's not made of concrete, but that's not necessary in the jungle. All you need is a mosquito net and a machete. I've been quite surprised by how seamless it is integrating into this community. There's, there's hardly ever any conflicts, you know. Everybody's very supportive. Uh, they're all wanting to help each other and share their experiences and, you know, their skills as well. So it's like, it's like paradise in a way, you know. Also, I guess we, we're very isolated from the rest of the world. So we have to, you know, we all kind of join together and make it work. Otherwise, it would be impossible. The community land is incredibly large, so everyone has plenty of space to explore and plant fruit trees. And the proximity of two nearby cities, Gualaquiza and El Pangi, gives some peace of mind in the event of an emergency. Some people living at Fruit Haven plan to spend many years here and possibly the rest of their lives. This raises the issue how difficult is it to get a permanent residency visa here in Ecuador? Yeah, another great thing about Ecuador is that it's fairly easy to get a visa, a residency visa, to live here permanently. Like if you have a, a college degree, you can just use that and get residency. And a lot of other countries uh, where people are going to in the tropics is very difficult, especially a lot of countries in Southeast Asia. Foreigners can't even buy land and it costs a million dollars to get a visa. So Ecuador is really accessible. Um, so it's if people come here and they like the fruit and they like that they can grow everything they love like meringue and durian and they want to stay here long term, it's not that hard to buy land um, affordably and get residency to live here for a long time. What could be the reason for someone to leave their life behind and move here? Of course, just like anywhere on earth, we can easily find ourselves facing problems here. You know, I, I grew the fruit and I picked it and then I'm eating it and I'm pooping it back out and it just makes this like circle of life. I'm just like enjoying life with plants a lot now. It's kind of like with a fruit tree, like if you give it like an artificial fertilizer that's salt based, it's forced to absorb it really quick because it's salt. But then if you give it like all this like leafy matter that slowly breaks down, it slowly takes it up and it's going to end up having a longer lifespan. In conclusion, I'd say it's about what you put in is what you get out and same thing goes with your mind and body. Some people manage to live here very frugally. To not make it so much a paradise, there is only one thing that personally I have like to <laughs> truly uh, learn to like. <laughs> I don't know if it will happen, but these are mosquitoes, like in mosquitoes or flies or something that bite everywhere. And it's really, wow, I have never experienced this kind of bugs <laughs> and I feel that many things happen here naturally like there is no strict rules you have to do this 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 at this time and your turn your turn the things happen naturally and I see that everyone just wants from himself to do their things because we, we live together and also we choose to be here it's our choice to to spend time with each other to live that way Many people at Fruit Haven, like Jaden, are able to live in paradise without needing deep pockets. The waterfall is a favorite not only of Jaden, but also of Boris and everyone else. It is a free and nature-friendly way for a person to shower in the middle of the jungle without using energy The waterfall spot is shady, and the water temperature is simply perfect. There's something there in the wild, it's a reflection of me. People fight for survival. I'm chasing tails, I'm surrounded. Can't stop for a second to breathe. Life are flowing like water. Yeah.
freedom, serenity, ripe fruits, and no agrochemicals. If just like a few million people start to live like this, start to take some actions of like taking private communication and like some alternative activism, like uh, the founder, one of the founders of permaculture said like, activism is not done by protesting, it's done by farming. Maybe I'm a bit rough, but I'm gonna say it how I wanna say it, basically is uh, if people are interested in like anything that's going on here, if they think they wanna join, I wanna remind you that it's not gonna be easy, but so where am I? I'm at Fruit Haven Eco Village, and I came here for community, mainly, actually, um, for connection. It was one of the main reasons. Uh, yeah, some permaculture stuff as well. I wanted to learn and familiar myself with that a little bit more. Um, but the main reason was community and the jungle. I think I find connection here, 100%. Uh, not only with the people, because yeah, good conversations are happening, workshops are happening, people are coming together and to, to work on themselves and learn about communication, uh, have open communication circles where people are just sharing, people listening, so it's like a giving and a taking, uh, learning, everyone has something to share and to learn and so it's building connection, not only with other people but I've noticed like with myself, when I have the time to go you know, maybe a little excursion, an adventure to a waterfall. And then, yeah, when I come back, I feel like more whole, like another piece of myself. I've also created a strong relationship with banana. <laughs> with having a rack of bananas, of seda, for example, it's just like comforting. It's like, feels like home. Yeah. <laughs> like a monkey. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good to come to terms with like, maybe accepting some aspects that aren't so easy, like, um, sometimes there's a lot of bugs or there's a lot of work to do, but it's going to be a lot more rewarding too. And Fruit Haven is perhaps one of the most beautiful places on earth a raw vegan can travel to. A place with inspiring souls and wondrous opportunities. Come here expecting it to be hard and push you in different ways that you weren't expecting. Finding ways to live uh, away from from this uh, society that kind of became polluted and uh, wasteful in many ways. So here we have no waste, we just compost everything, we don't have trash, we don't use too much plastic or chemicals, and yeah, just a natural lifestyle that we can recycle. Preferably love fruit and yeah, but maybe buy some land if you want to stay for a long time. <laughs> I just wanted to find the community that is not only about permaculture, but where I can just stay with the people who eat the way I eat and who eat the way I feel is the best for my body. People that come here a lot of times, they have the alternative way of living, so they want to invest in other things like buying land that produces fruit and they have things like silver and gold that holds value forever. Like I said, community. I came here for community, for like-minded people. For people who are, are into this type of eating, uh, eating healthy foods, vegan, uh, into health, taking care of themselves. At the moment there is more and more communities like that all over the world. The people really feel the need of coming back to the nature, of creating back the relation with the nature on a deep level. Here we have a really beautiful and simple life. We just wake up, we go to work with the nature and in the nature. We can go to take the shower in a waterfall, walking just five minutes. We don't need to use any other shower, even if we have it. So we have Fruit Haven 1, we got Fruit Haven 2, we got Fruit Haven 3, we have Fruit Haven 10. And right now we're looking for some more people so we can buy Fruit Haven 4. Um, generally when someone's interested in buying land here, they'll go on our website and read a whole lot of information we have there. Um, and then they can fill out a questionnaire um, where we can decide if we want to accept them uh, to participate in the group land buys. So once we get enough people into one of those um, group land buys, we buy the property and set it all up and mark out the lots. Every once in a while somebody asks like, oh, if I, I don't have enough money saved up, if I come back in like two years, are there going to be land available? Of course, we're never going to stop doing this, we're going to keep doing it. We visited Ecuador, a self-sufficient village where everyone is free. 
We hope you feel the atmosphere of the community just by watching this. If you're interested in Fruit Haven, perhaps you want to spend a few weeks volunteering or maybe even buy land here, definitely come down for a visit. It's an amazing experience to see what has been created here. This is a big durian tree we planted like four years ago. Hopefully it'll give us fruit in a couple of years. Just gotta be patient. It's one of the first trees we planted on Fruit Haven.